Yeah. Yes. Jeez. Hi, I'm Heather Lang. Hello. Eleanor Bauer. How y'all doing? <laughs> no, just kidding. Right. Good um, evening and welcome evening. to Trash is Fair. Yes. <laughs> so aesthetically, I for me, I'm obsessed with... Um, I just think it's so interesting how all this new technology is always coming out, the new iPhone, the new TV, the new thing, the new thing, and it's it's like what happens to all these old TVs and this, we, we uh, found this thing called a videonics machine which is used for old 80s cable access TV shows and I was just obsessed with it because it's like whatever, why, what, whatever happened to that piece of electronics that somebody made and is just sitting in a garbage dump somewhere and just piling up. These, iPhones and Blackberries and all the costumes were all as well made from just old stuff that I found around in my house, an old computer that I completely tore apart and made I had you know necklace out of. The rule was that thing had things actually had to be trash. There was no buying anything. Yeah. And there was no like it had to be useless. So these keyboards and things that you were taking apart had to be actually not like out of use. Right. Like, like dated, so, like yeah. yeah. When you ask about the the aesthetic being out maybe retro, it's probably just because it's trash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there's something, I think, for me also, I don't know. No, that's good. That's so good. is there also a relation with ecology, somehow? For me, yeah. yes. I mean, this yeah. this show is so fun because in what, what started so intuitively and when we were working together and like trash is fierce and yeah, let's have a second costumes. In the first episode, we opened up a lot of doors and we kind of explored like five different scenes, a few different types of characters, and we, we kind of were just kind of toying with the idea of what what we could do together as a double one woman show. And this first scene that we made, this Trash is Fierce song, and then the sort of QVC slash infomercial slash public access channel, um, strange kind of television type slash talk show slash motivational kind of spiritual thing. Um, then we decided just to kind of expand that one scene in the second episode and work on that. Yeah. And for me, that, that kind of weird do-it-yourself, that homemade television thing has to do... We were inspired a lot by Starry and Stardom, which was a public access show in the 70s or 80s in, on like New York television film in someone's basement in Long Island. And I don't know, we were just sort of into this thing because it's a side project that we do alone. And we wanted to really explore what is our... Thing with like wanting to do entertainment or wanting to do acting or wanting to do characters and coming from the dance field and what do we do with that and yeah. somehow I really related this kind of amateurish desire to really just perform like really perform a very gregarious very full overstated characters things like this comedy also I related that to this kind of stairway to stardom this sort of um, what I loved about stairway to stardom also is that it predated things like uh, American Idol or whatever. This kind of appetite for like the self-made star that's so American, which is so, so a part of reality TV now. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say is that I have an obsession with reality TV. I just think it's so funny, like, so you think you dance, American Idol, all these things where it's like, who's the best? America decides, you know, and also coming from a background of com commercial dance world and Broadway where it's like very much about, you know, selling yourself and getting to the top. It was like, I kind of wanted to do the bad version of that, like what would be like the worst thing you could try to sell, kind of, you know? A lot of it, yeah, a lot of it was under, like undermining, or looking back, like for me what I liked about Stairway to Stardom is that it was, it predated all those things, it was kind of the bad version, it was this weird, it was like a talent show, yeah. like a third grade talent show, but they were Star adults yeah. self-producing it in a basement, you know, like, it was so bizarre, and I loved this kind of, like seeing this appetite in a very young and nascent stage, not produced, not making tons of money, but just that, that pure appetite to perform and not really knowing that this was a huge marketplace yet, you know? So for me, the ecology thing, yeah, there's like there's an ecological possibility of a statement like Trash is Fierce, which we also joke about, which we also conclude, uh, include in our, in our joking, but, or conclude by putting it to rest, no. But for me, I mean, it's also, there's so many possible philosophical openings yeah. in the material that I had so much fun kind of like folding in and making fun of and folding in and making so fun of So clearly a political stance as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's very like anti-capitalist, it's very ecological, it's very um, find your inner self, very spiritual. Take care of your shit. No, it's also very much about like new, like this kind of a spiritual relationship to things. It has this very like, you know, 
And materialism. Since, since you mentioned that this is a side project uh, in relation to what you do with each other, how, how did you manage to work on this? How was the, the working method? <laughs> basically, like, like insane, really, on Skype. We did it on Skype, basically. I met her, and she was working with Boris in Paris. I mean, we met in college. We met in college. The first episode we made on her beach house on my vacation from <laughs> touring with Rosas, and like also I was injured at that time, whatever, running around in high heels because my calf was torn. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> but we went to a dance camp, like full, like we went to jazz dance, dance camp because I was teaching, teaching that because I was like, you know, I needed extra money, whatever. So we were there in the upstairs, like attic room of a dance camp of for, a like, dance teenagers camp for teenagers who were doing competition jazz, like for real, for real. And we're there just <laughs> doing this thing in the attic, like in between. That, that's how it all started. That's how it all started. And we had this thing in, in Berlin at Tens of August. We had a kind of work in progress showing, but that ended up being just the end for us because, well, then you got this. Amazing job on Broadway in Spider Man. Yeah. For so, a minute. Yeah. I mean, it was just one <laughs> crazy journey after another. Yeah. It kind of and so, this episode, you came to meet me in Paris. Yeah, I was like, we have to do this. I feel unfulfilled. Like, Spider Man was a disaster. I, I, this, I have to follow my heart. Please, let's do this. I'll meet you anywhere, Eleanor. She's like, well, I'll be in Paris these days. I'm like, I'm there. Because she has family. She I have family that's there. So, it was nuts. So, first episode, it was like, where are you? Oh, you're teaching and you have a beach house. Okay, I'm there. And, like, yeah. I made the journey, and then this one, she made the journey, and then the rest was Skype. Yeah, did through Skype. And we had Which a week really in hard. Brussels where I did manage to get some studio space. Because I thought the whole week in Paris in a, in a living room would just not be enough focus. So. Yeah. Luckily, Kai Peter gave us some, some studio space. Um, but it was, I'm, I can't believe we made it on Skype, but actually I wanted to say that like, it was so scary because right before the premiere, she arrived two days before we were about to go on. We hadn't seen each other we hadn't in had person this with the finished script, with the finished like... And then you finished it here. Yeah. I mean, the like, script for the was premiere. finished, but like I'd never seen the costume. She was making the costumes. I was just like, I don't know, Heather, it sounds great. I trust you. I trust you. You're great with costumes. I mean, do it. I wish I could help you. I wish it was there. I wish I could help you glue gun things together. Right? <laughs> it was stable like, things. Our costumes are like glue gun and stable, and stable trash. And safety pin and taped. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And can you say just a few words about what you feel about being uh, presented in American realness? Something about the. It's perfect. It's I mean, perfect. we also made the show in response to the invitation. Yeah, like we worked, we didn't, we had this invitation, so then we made episode two for American Realness. So it's called Destiny's Realness, and we talk about realness. Yeah. And I personally feel honored and grateful to be a part of this. I think it's unbelievable. I really do. I'm like, it's so cool to be around all these amazing artists. Not to be like cheesy, but and it's I true. Do, what I was saying the other day to Miguel actually is that I really like Miguel. Miguel Gutierrez. What I liked about the, what I like about Ben's curation is that it's not only about the new, young. Mm. fresh, you know, because that kind of that appetite in the market is so strong in dance and in art in general. And I really like that there's a there's a scope of different artists at different levels of their career. Mm. And it's not really confined by one aesthetic. Like there's 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 appetites and interests mm -hmm. that are common uh, but not not too strict. I just really I think it's a really strong program and it feels so beautiful just to see these people. It's like it's like a big reunion. It's a life reunion. It's like <laughs> Running into these people in this building feels so good. It doesn't feel like a very commercial marketplace kind of atmosphere, even though it's in the middle of this marketplace week, you know, in Brussels, in, Brussels. <laughs> in New wow. York. Wow. It's very, like, there's a very nice um, atmosphere and a really great number of artists. It's, I like it. I really respect Ben. What Ben has done is huge. Huge. Go, Ben. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.